So here is an instrument that uses buoyancy to measure density. Uh, it uses a float here and measures the buoyant forces on that float. Okay, so how this works is there's a float of known volume and it pulls on the end of a cantilever. And it pulls more the more dense the fluid around it is. And so we, we can determine the how much the beam bends with the strain gauges and from that we can determine the force on the end. Okay so you're gonna need a couple different kinds of PVC pipe some uh, one and a quarter inch diameter there uh, it doesn't matter too much on the thickness for that one and some three quarter inch diameter um, and you want to going to want to get it as thin as possible um, because really what you want is for it to be pretty flimsy. Uh, next we have a pill bottle. Uh, you can get these at any uh, pharmacy. Try to get one as big as possible. Some zip ties. Um, some strain gauges. I'll tell you more about those later and some long umbilical wire. Uh, Romex wire works really well for this application. All right, you're gonna wanna cut the small PVC pipe into a shape like this. See how I, I cut about a quarter, three quarters of, of it off. Uh, make sure you drill a hole in the end and then some holes here. And that's your cantilever there. Okay, so to prepare the surface for the strain gauges, first we're just going to sand it off, rough it up a little bit. Uh, next, we're going to wipe it off with uh, some different chemicals. Um, make sure the surface is really clean. Next we're going to put a piece of tape, sticky side up, uh, and we're going to flip it down and it's going to tape down the strain gauge when we're ready. So the strain gauges come in a box that looks like this, uh, and on the back it'll tell you the resistance and the gauge factor. Uh, try to get a gauge factor as high as you can. So then with tweezers, remove the strain gauge uh, from the pouch that it comes in. So we want the copper pads exposed, so that side is going to go down onto the tape because we're going to flip it over and they'll be exposed when we're done. And there we have it. So next we're going to coat the gauge with this catalyst. It should come with the super glue. Uh, just coat the bottom with a, just a real thin layer, just like that. Next comes the adhesive, the super glue. So we're just going to put one small drop right in front of the tape, just like that. And then we're going to take our gauge and just squish it over that adhesive. And we're going to hold it there for a minute. And so once it's dry, just peel the tape off, be sure and do it gently so you don't tear off the gauge. So now is probably the hardest part of the whole project, uh, is soldering. So you're going to want to turn down the soldering iron to a pretty low temperature so it doesn't melt the gauge. Uh, and we're going to do something called tinning, where we're just going to put a small drop of solder onto those copper pads. So, just melt a little bit of, of solder and stick it onto those pads. And so later we can solder the wires on really easily. 
So next we want to get the Romex wire ready. So just want to cut that open and uh, get rid of all the insulation. And there's going to be three wires in there, but you don't need the uh, bare copper wire. So just cut that off and then just strip the, the other two wires and you should be good. So here is the schematic for our circuit. Uh, there's the batteries and there's the strain gauges and in the middle is the voltmeter. Uh, and I won't show you exactly how to do it, but what you want is to have the top two and the bottom two opposite of each other. So you're going to have a lot of um, exposed wire when you're done. Uh, what you want to do is get some some nail polish and just coat every exposed wire in this nail polish uh, and make sure that it's all uh, waterproof and ready to go. Make sure that there's no exposed wires left. Okay, so when everything's done, it should look like this. Uh, you have your float on the end uh, and your two strain gauges on top and two on bottom. And tape everything up because it is pretty fragile. And you have your battery pack there. Um, you can waterproof that just like you did with the motors. Uh, I won't go into too much detail about that, but yeah, there it is. Okay, so then what you're going to do is encase it in your bigger PVC pipe. Uh, just clamp down the, the zip ties and then it's protected and ready to go. Alright, so here it is in action. Uh, you can see the float's putting quite a buoyant force on the end. Uh, and let's go see how we can read it. Okay, so on the other end of your Romex wire, you're going to strip the wires again and I put some alligator clips on the end and connected to them to some voltmeter probes. And, and you just turn the voltmeter onto DC voltage and you're ready to go. So enjoy!